This rain started last evening on November 14th, about dark, statewide. I guess it was raining all over the state, maybe a little snow on the Upper Peninsula. Kind of hard to believe with the temperature, though. We're here, opening morning, November 15th of firearm deer season. I keep looking around because we hear shots periodically. We're in Clare County. Now, this is a county that has a, a good number of deer. This area in particular has a lot of deer, a lot of bucks reported right now. But the conditions, well, you know, I really can't say they're that bad. Very frankly, I've seen a lot of deer move in the rain in the past. And it really doesn't seem to bother the deer all that much. We haven't seen anything yet. We've been sitting here a while. Temperature, 50 degrees. A, a good breeze. Oh, there was a the shot. But I expect the deer will be moving fairly, fairly naturally today. Uh, you know, I'm here in the blind with my with a cast on my leg and a plastic bag on the cast. How I got back to this blind, well, we'll go into that a little bit later. That was an adventure. John Ford had to carry not only the camera and all the gear in, but uh, all of my gear. Oh, it's like having a full-time babysitter with me. <laughs> but we're looking for, uh, I suppose, a good day. I don't know, when I get a deer, of course, John's gonna have to go out and take care of it, right, John? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But I won't mind. Yeah, that it'll be a welcome sight. Now we're in an area here. There's a there's a two track road. I don't know, a hundred yards or so over there. We drove in this morning and walked back through the woods. We're in an area that is it's not really a swamp. This is high grass out there, and I imagine if we see the deer moving through, we won't see necessarily the whole deer. Hopefully, the antlers and the top part of it. We have a decoy set up right over here. One of those flambeau deer decoys it's a doe we, we don't know if that'll attract a deer this morning or not but there's always the chance that it will at 9 30 a.m an eight maybe ten point buck showed up i'm gonna have to shoot it That buck trotted off as if it wasn't hit, but how could I have missed at that distance? Well, here we are at the scene, the biggest buck I've ever seen in the woods and had a crack at, came right through here, was walking, and it evidently saw us in the blind when John says, there it is, wait a second. Well, we waited. You can see the runway right here. You can oh, see that, yeah. John? Oh, That's, yeah. uh, oh, I gotta hop over here. Uh, this is where the buck was going. Now, here's, here's what happened. Uh, we're trying to piece this together. We've looked at the tape a number of times. Come on over on this side, John. You can see that I clearly hit this tree right there, and there's the, the entry, knocked bark off, came out the back side. Now, this is about shoulder height on a deer, and that buck, I'm, I'm, I know I nicked it. The reason I know I nicked it for sure is right back here, we have hair. But it does look like back hair, and it looks like hair that has been nipped off. I mean, this is, this appears to be, to be cut right off. So, all the hair is, is about exactly the same length, and it looks like it could have been from the back of the deer. In fact, I'm gonna put this in my pocket, check it out with the guys at camp. Because, you know, when we look at the videotape, and we don't have a chance to look at it slow motion out here, but you see right over the shoulder of the deer, behind it, a plume, which that would occur when a deer is hit, but it would also occur when a tree is hit. And we couldn't tell when we looked at the tape whether that tree was hit before or after the deer, whether it was behind it or in front of it. This certainly is strange. You see, the blind is there. That's about, oh, 50 yards away. The hole in the tree is there. The deer hair is where we're standing. But that could be because it blew from the wind. But this is all uh, 
very strange to put together. The buck took off running and running like it was just spooked but not hit and then I saw it walking back around that way and it was just walking normally and I followed it and it kind of disappeared into the brush there but we're going to go back and look. We've checked this whole area to see if we can find any evidence that it was a, an actual hit other than just grazing the hair. They call me Mr. Michigan Outdoors, but sometimes I don't know why. I tell you, John, this is, that was my chance. I don't know. This was as big a disappointment as a hunter can have. Only because my adrenaline was pumping could I walk further into the swamp on my crutches. There's a shot. We're out here about 100 yards from the blind. I don't know, we scoured the area. See, that buck, I, I think I came as close to hitting that buck as you, you can. Nipped hair off its back because it ran a distance and then walked around, circled around, almost as if it was going to come back, that it was curious. I mean, that oftentimes happens. If they get spooked, they'll come around to check. So I think we scared that buck. But he could, that could have been him uh, catching his lunch over there. But we got back in this swamp. Here I am with bag on leg. Dr. DeVito said one thing, I don't want to get this cast wet, but I have water to go through. Look at this, John. I got more of this to go through yet. My biggest problem is with these, these crutches sinking in. I've had a, just a heck of a time getting through here. I'll tell you. Oh, whew. that was as close as I've come. During the several days we spent deer hunting, I struggled nearly one mile all toll through terrain like this. If I had skis or snowshoes on the bottom of those crutches, I could have walked easily over the wet ground. Of course, they would have hung up in the brush. I was glad to get back to the blind. Now, this is the blind. It's fairly small. You can see the design, fairly simple. A lot of people could build one. These uh, windows flop down so you can see out sloped roof and when it rains like it was this morning dripping off of that end it's not insulated but it doesn't have to be you can put a little heater in there and stay warm uh, it just has some tar paper on for protection and exterior type fiberboard and anyway that's the blind that's where john and i spent some long days this being one of the longest but here's how we get in put a new door on here here's where oh you can see pretty well Got our gear in here. John sits on that seat right there, and I was sitting right here. Back when I took the shot at that deer, show you how I did that. Yeah, this is gonna take a second to get in with this leg. I know this doesn't look too graceful, but I'm not hurting myself doing this. Here was the scenario when that deer walked up. I had this bucket, which I normally sit on, I was sitting here, and I had my broken leg cradled on this ankle. And that's when the deer walked up here, so I picked up my rifle, rested it on the edge. Back in the studio, we solved the puzzle. This was a big buck with a wide spread, and it looked like I made a perfect behind-the-shoulder shot. The scope I had on my rifle had a slight focus problem. Not bad, but the focus was soft. Now there was a tree that I thought was behind the deer. With a soft focus through the scope, plus the excitement, I didn't see that the base of the tree was really in front of that buck. The deer flagged its tail normally and bound off as if it was spooked, but not hit. See, its tail waves back and forth, and that buck didn't run hard. It trotted off, looking back several times. Didn't look like it was hit at all, especially when we compare its reaction to that of another buck we had in our video files. That's exactly how my buck ran off. The tape proves without a doubt that the bullet hit the tree, knocked hair off the buck's back, but otherwise was a clean miss. That buck was spooked, but it wasn't hurt. Oh, boy. I'm going to relive this one, you know. 
I have moments that I relive over and over again, and this is going to be one that I will be forced to relive because many of you will remind me of this constantly for years to come. Oh, I was hoping with this broken leg it would be easy. Huh. I, of all people, should know that hunting is never easy. John Ford and I talked a lot about that moment, checking the scope, looking at the tape on a two-inch black-and-white monitor in the blind. We had scoured the area anyway, as a good hunter should do, just in case the deer was down, and we didn't see what we thought we saw the way we thought we saw it. It was a big disappointment, but I'm glad that buck got away unscathed, and our hunt continued. Things are drying out. Uh, you know, some pretty good deer hunting conditions. And like I said, being lunchtime here, we're coming upon the last half hour of the day. This is prime time. I mean, as prime as there is left in the day, <laughs> the last half hour. Hopefully there'll be some deer activity. The, throughout the day, the rain stopped at probably 8.30, 9 o'clock this morning. I had a fantastic chance at a big buck. Uh, the shooting tapered off about 11 o'clock, and it's been real quiet throughout the afternoon, but it's been dry. It's been comfortable. The buck pole at Lenny's Gun Shop in Houghton Lake looked about like it did last year on opening night. There were some nice bucks hanging, decent racks. Lenny is carrying on the tradition that Tuck Sporting Goods established many years ago. Hunters flock in to hang their bucks and to see how opening day was for other hunters. Kathy and Abby were there at the time when Gene Woods from Lansing pulled up with a monster buck. This turned out to be a 12-pointer, larger than anything that had been brought in on opening day here at Lenny's Buck Pole at Houghton Lake. You got the biggest deer here yet tonight. Well, I hope so. <laughs> How big did they say it was, 12? Yeah, they said 12 with a 20-inch spread. Where were you hunting at? I was hunting Morristown. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is your first year or second this year? This second year up in Morristown with the uh, Rutten Buck Deer Camp. Oh, Okay. And how many deer have you taken? I took uh, a little spike horn up there last year, and I got this one up there this year. And it was really remarkable. It's something that probably never happened to me again. Did you get him this morning or this afternoon? or? I got him this tonight. Right tonight? Came in, yeah. All right. How many other deer did you see today? Well, I seen uh, three other deer, and that was right when we drove in in the morning to drop the other two fellows off with me, my Jason, my stepbrother, and his buddy Eric. And uh, that's the, last, the other two I seen, and I seen this last one here. Sounds good. What was the weather like over there? Kind of rainy all day? Yep. Rainy and misty. I had to keep my scope clean, but yeah. didn't have to use it on the first two shots. I, first I two? Open sights. Yeah, I had to use open sights. He was on a flat run. I couldn't oh. get him opened up in the sights or in the scope, so I used the open sights on it, and it really worked out pretty good for me. Well, good. You did a real good job. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Good job, Tiny. The youngster who got the biggest buck was 14-year-old Andy Kaufman. He got a three-point, and his dad owns the buck pole. Well, Lenny's your dad. Yeah. Were you hunting with him this morning? Well, I was hunting about half a mile, mile away from his blind. Now, is this your first year of hunting? Yeah, rifle hunting. Rifle hunting? Okay, good. And you got, what, a spike horn? Is that what you got here? It's a three-point. Three-point. Well, you did really good for a first year. Yep. How do you feel about it? I feel good. Well, you should. Many more to come. Yep. <laughs> good. The first woman to the buck pole for the second year in a row, Mindy Hines. Mindy, what is the deal? <laughs> We pulled into town, and here's a sign that says Mindy Hines, first deer. How'd this happen again, two years in a row? I don't know. I'm getting lucky. <laughs> I, I plan on doing this every year. So well, you, you got a good record going. <laughs> I do not. We live right behind here. We live yeah. just right back there. So, um, What time did you get it? About 8.30. This morning? Mm -hmm. Is this first one, second one that came in, or what? Tell First. me about it. you got to be excited. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> there was three doe in my pile, and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And they started getting excited, so I looked, and he was, like, they're here, and he was out here. Mm -hmm. He kind of, like, stood up, shook, and he walks in, kind of nice and easy. And I waited, and he turned right broadside, and I oh. really <laughs> stood real easy. I mean, <laughs> that's great. You did good. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. So here we are, and here Mindy is, and we'll see you again next, next year. year. <laughs> Visiting a buck pole on opening day is always good for a hunter's soul, especially one like me who blew what could be a chance of a lifetime for a big buck. Many of these hunters are done, but I continued hunting the next day. We set out a decoy to attract a buck, hopefully, but in the two blinds I had hunted from, neither was baited. 
Due to the adversity of my leg, very frankly, we have moved to a, another blind on some property here that's next to the Mike Sell Ranch, the Ferentino property. He said he has lots of deer moving through here in the evening. And we're out in a, in a field situation. Really, this is open field all around us, but it's connecting between two swamps. He says they move. Well, John set the decoy out there. And that, I'm sure, will attract some deer, especially bucks. But this blind up here is kind of a spacious blind, actually. Um, they had a Lazy Boy chair in here. An old one, a real old one. But that took up a little too much room, so I'm sitting on my bucket. Got my leg up here in the corner on some a pile of plastic and some logs. At least it gets us up in the air a little bit. Uh, John, of course, is behind me with the camera. Lots of elbow room. Uh, it's a nice evening. So we're hoping for some good things, hoping that tonight, the second night of our firearm deer season, old Gimpy will get one. I hope. <laughs> well, from this field blind, we saw quite a few deer, 13 does and one bedded down about 100 yards away. The does are fun to watch because you never know when a buck will appear that's after one of those does. Just before sunset, another one showed up. It's coming down the road. Can you see it? This deer walked with its head down, characteristic of a buck. It was by itself. It trotted to the south of us over 100 yards away, and we almost thought we saw antlers. Where'd he go? Oh, there he goes. Roll. Because he's he's right between the, the, the trees there. Switch sides again. Go on the other side. Okay. Oops, you're not. You're not. John and I thought we saw antlers, then we didn't, then we did, then we didn't. It's not a buck, right? It does look like a buck. It does? It is a buck. It's a buck. It's a spike. It's a spike? Yep. Let me. It's a spike, dude. I saw him for sure. Isn't it? Oh, I can't tell. It's a spike. At the last moment, both of us thought we saw legal spikes, although it wasn't until we got this tape back into the studio and froze the frame that we were sure that could have been my buck. The next morning, Mike Ferentino let me use one of his best blinds, one that they usually save for bow hunting. Well, here we are, third day of the firearm deer season. I'm getting a little dejected here. My leg isn't getting any better for all the swamp walking I've been doing. I'm sitting right here now in a different blind on the Ferentino property. I'm sitting, put my leg on the bucket, and I have an insulated boot on. But uh, we're waiting here early morning, and there's a rye field all around us. And I'm sitting here. Look at this. This is a la Lazy Boy uh, rocker of some type that they have in this blind. It's a real deluxe blind. It has carpeting on the walls. So actually, you know, you can talk a little bit in here to each other, and the sound probably doesn't go out. Now, if I see a deer, or if John sees a deer, tells me I'm going to swing this this recliner sideways so I can sit up on the edge. Now, I have a couple variations here. I can shoot either out this window here or out this window. Now, you can see there's a deer decoy we have set right out here facing the opposite direction. So hopefully that might attract a buck. But I'm going to... If a, if a deer comes in, I'm going to rest my rifle up against here. But it is a little bit of a handicap with this leg, and I'm getting real tired of it, and I don't know how many more days of deer hunting I can take. But we're going to, we're going to stick it out here until I get one dog on it. There's too many deer this year and too many big ones. So I'm going to sit back here, and we'll, we'll just keep an eye out. Hopefully get something today. John and I were getting a little dejected. We hadn't seen many deer, but... I had missed a couple of really good chances. I thought my luck was all used up, but it wasn't. Yes, I got I can't shoot because it's standing right past the decoy. It's looking at the decoy. Good shot. I could to hold that steady. 
Oh, man, and I squeezed the trigger. I thought it would never step out from behind that decoy. Oh, dude, I can't believe it. Oh, oh, the third day of the season. I am, I am shaking harder than... Oh, man. Folks, you've got to excuse this acute case of buck fever. It's the worst I've ever had, but with a broken leg and a string of bad luck behind me, I could hardly believe that I'd get a chance at a big buck like this. Oh, man. Oh. I'm careful. I'm so excited I can hardly stand it. Oh, look at that rack. Oh. I really should calm down, I suppose. Oh, man. Oh, congratulations. Oh, dude, thank you. Hey. <laughs> Golly. Oh, I don't know how I can, I guess I'm gonna, oh. Oh, man. Oh, look at this. Five, six, seven, a seven point. This is the biggest buck I ever got in my life. Oh, I can't believe this. So is it all worth it? Oh. I was beginning to wonder this morning whether it was worth it or not. Oh, man, I'm shaking. Well, I already put some dental floss on my tag here earlier. Back in the blind. Let's see. It's, i got to punch this out. It's seven on the one, two, three, four, four on the left, three on the right. Let's see. Left, four. Boy, now's the time that you cut yourself, you know. Four on the left, three on the right. Oh. Whew. Loving a smile anyway. <laughs> yeah. There we are. Well, this buck proves that oh. perseverance pays off and an extra dose of luck never hurts either.